Once upon a time, in middle of the hills of Beverly, there was a beautiful building. Inside the building, there was an Olympic-sized swimming pool. A NBA-sized basketball court. An arcade, karate studio, and more. But there was one part of the facility that was the best of all. It would shake the building with excitement. It was called the Gem Hebrew School. Well, you see, I was one of those lucky kids who got to be a part of it. I'd love to tell you more about it, but then you might be here all day. Okay, fine. I'll tell you. Just grab a pillow and a comfy couch. This might sound crazy, but it's an all-in-one school. There's Hebrew reading, writing, speaking, sports, arts, learning of Jewish histories and traditions, acting, technology, Jewish holidays, prayers, parties, learning the different mitzvahs, morals and ethics, friends, and even trips. In short, it's a school for the mind, body, and soul. Let's start off with how most Sundays at Hebrew school start. I say the Moldaani prayer we learned, thanking God for giving me another day, then quickly roll out of bed as fast as I can and get ready to run to Hebrew school so I can get a punch. Whoa, calm down. Not that type of punch. I mean a punch in my punch card. Basically, every time I arrive to Hebrew school on time, or even early because I just love Hebrew school, I get a punch in my card. And after five punches, I win a surprise. The cool part is our Hebrew school shared the punch card idea, and now it's being used by over 40 other Hebrew schools around the world. Okay, next, we all race to the Hebrew school homeroom classroom, where we all meet to pray together, in unity. Doesn't matter your age, height, or even Hebrew level. Rather, we learn to love and respect each other. Our teachers tell us the Hashem, God, is like our father. Just like mom and dad want to feel appreciated, we were taught to use prayer as a time to show appreciation and thank Hashem for all the amazing things He blesses us with each day. But we also learned that prayer is a time to ask. Hashem loves when we ask Him for things we want. Whether it's about toys, health, friends, He wants to hear about everything that's in our heart. My favorite part is when we cover our eyes and say the Shema. I feel like it's just me and God, and nobody else can listen. It's important to pray for others too, especially our brothers and sisters in Israel. After prayer time, we split into different levels for Hebrew reading, writing, or speaking. I'm really proud of myself. I started from Aleph, and now I know how to read fluently. But there's this one elite class that now already knows how to speak Hebrew. I wish I can get to that level one day. I'm not giving up. I know you might start getting worried, but some of us like to even stay in class during recess time to continue learning, or to even help in the office to prepare for the upcoming activities. Did you ever imagine that I'd even learn office skills in Hebrew school? I told you that it's all in one. For those of us that like to go out to recess sometimes, it's a blast. Sometimes we play basketball, soccer, relay races, arcades, or even just chill with our friends. One week, we came to Hebrew school and they remodeled the entire basketball gym and even treated us with basketball training coaches. As soon as we hear the whistle ring, we run back upstairs to class. Cause you see, this is not a regular school. This is a school that makes you say, I love school. Because learning is fun here. We always know that our teachers have another creative surprise up their sleeves for class after recess. Whether we're about to learn the Parsha, Torah portion, Jewish history, a new mitzvah, or even about the upcoming Jewish holiday, our teachers present the lessons using hands-on activities, specifically highlighting the lessons and the moral values that we can use in our everyday lives. Like my teacher always says, the Torah is not a history book, it's a guide to life with real lessons we can use every day. For these classes, we are again divided accordingly to our age and level. There's the general knowledge younger division, older division, and then two advanced levels of Torahpedia. It's like a Jewish encyclopedia class covering many of the mitzvahs from the Torah. As you can see, our eyes are always glued to our teachers, because it's always just so interesting and entertaining. I'll share with you some of the things my class learned in Parsha class from the first book of the Torah. Besides for the technology that our teachers always incorporated into teaching our classes, each thing we learned was taught with a hands-on activity, which is why I will always remember what I learned forever. When we learned about Hashem, God, 
creating the world, we made a six days of creation hanger that's still in my closet. When we learned about Noah's Ark, we made yummy cupcake rainbow floods. When we learned about Abraham, the first Jew, and one to recognize Hashem, we made his wife Sarah in a box. When we learned about their love for the mitzvah of hospitality, we made our own welcome signs so we can act hospitable to our guests too. When we learned about their son Yitzchak marrying Rivka, we made our very own Hala just like Rivka. When we learned how she finally became pregnant after 20 years because she prayed to Hashem, we made our own Shema and Moda Ani prayer glow in the dark pillows so we can pray too. When we learned about their very different twins, Yaakov and Asif, we turned them into cookies. When we learned about Yaakov's wife Rachel passing away on the road in the Holy Land of Israel, we designed the Holy Kotel Western Wall Velvet Kit that I hung on my wall. When we learned about Rachel's son Yosef and his dreams about wheat, we made pretzel wheat stacks. When we learned the entire episode of how Yosef became second to the king, we were given clay to make a sculpture of any part of the story. When we learned about how his father was told the news of his son Yosef was still alive using a harp, we made our own harps. Then Yaakov blessed his sons, thereupon blessing the entire Jewish people forever, including me. The first book of the Torah operation ends here, but the excitement didn't end here. They treated us with your make your own kosher pizza party for the finishing. All of that was only learned by two of the Hebrew school classes, but like I told you before, there were two more advanced level classes called Torahpedia. It's like a Jewish encyclopedia class that covers many of the mitzvahs from the Torah using their Hebrew terms. But in order to join that level, they had to take extensive tests on everything they learned from the previous years. Everybody in that class passed the test with flying colors. Although I usually don't like homework, for some reason I love doing Hebrew school homework. After passing the test, they started the Torahpedia course by making black scratch hearts to remind them the importance of fulfilling the mitzvah in the Torah with heart and passion. When they learned about kosher, they went on a kosher hunt trip to the local pavilion supermarket to teach them the next mitzvah. Their teacher did something a bit crazy to teach them an unforgettable and powerful lesson about the power of speech to speak nice words. But also how hard it is to clean up a mess of spreading a rumor or something not nice about someone else. She had us tear open a pillow feather and throw it out the window to teach us how easy it is to let something come out of your mouths. But how hard it is to clean it up once it spreads. They made mezuzahs for their doorposts. Challah covers when learning about the treasures Hashem gave us, Shabbat. Hey, and our class got to learn to make those too. We even got to act out many of the Shabbat mitzvahs in our class. It was fun. They designed organizer boxes after learning about the mitzvah and the order of cleanliness. They made their own tadaka boxes after learning the importance of charity. And yes, my class luckily got to make that too. Then they learned about a mitzvah they loved called not to harm a live animal. It's amazing how the Torah teaches us to be kind even to animals. One mitzvah we all learned together was the mitzvah of loving your fellow. It taught us lessons like being nice to even kids that are younger than us and even people you never met. That's why we got to cheer on the LA Marathon runners when they were doing the mitzvah of keeping the bodies Hashem gave them healthy. And the rabbi even put tifflin on some of them. They finished the course by learning about the Shabbat customs of Kiddush of Havdalah. And then the mitzvah of happiness. Can you believe there's a mitzvah to be happy? As you can see, the one thing that all our classes had in common was creative activities that brought everything we learned to life in a fun and exciting way. You're probably wondering if I'm done yet. But guess what? I didn't even start telling you about all the holidays we learned about and of course partied for throughout the year. You see these mustard bottles? We used them to make honey jars for Rosh Hashanah. For the high holidays of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we all gathered together to pray and listen to the chauffeur. There were over 1,000 people praying under one roof. It was pretty amazing. We also went on a surprise trip to the Peninsula Hotel to do a custom called Tashle. For Sukkot, we made special cookie jars with a special bracha blessing to say on the cookies in a sukkah. After learning some more, we were treated with a kosher pizza party in the sukkah hut, and we all got to shake the lulav and etro. Even our parents got to shake it. For the holiday of Simchat Torah, we got a tour of the synagogue and even got to see the inside of the Torah. And our stomachs did too, cause we made our own edible Torahs too. After learning about Hanukkah, we were thrown from one activity to another. First we got to make our own latkes from scratch, then we watched a movie about Hanukkah, then played dreidel, then we had our own beautiful Hebrew school Shabbat night Hanukkah dinner, then a Shabbat day Hebrew naming ceremony, and to top it all off, we had our grand Hanukkah slam carnival, featuring the world famous acrobatic dunk squad. I just love Jewish holidays. 
And let me mention that everything we learned in Hebrew school, we were taught to also apply in our homes. They were called mitzvah missions to do at home. Then came the holiday of Tu Bishva, the birthday of, no, not me, but the trees, teaching us the importance of always growing as a Jew. We made our very own plants out of a single bean, which is still growing outside my windowsill. We even got to learn the different blessings of the foods we eat. The next holiday, which I must say is my favorite one, is called Purim. Well, you see, I forgot to mention that this Hebrew school is also an acting school, which made my classmates and I famous. Also, after learning the story of Purim, we created a Purim rap movie, telling the story of Purim in a rap. The movie got 5,130 YouTube views and 11,000 Facebook views. And if I may mention the Hanukkah promo movie we starred in, got 3,770 YouTube views and 13,303 Facebook views and still counting! To end off our Purim fever, we had a Purim party in the Wild Wild West. After learning about Passover, we experienced a real, but fake, Passover Seder called Mock Seder to practice everything we needed to know about Passover. We made our own personalized Passover Haggadahs. Some of us joined the Gem Passover Seders at night, while others made their own at home and were able to run it for their whole family after being so well trained. After receiving weekly WhatsApp pictures of all the fun we were having at Hebrew school, our parents wanted to be a part of it too. Other than peeking into our classroom sometimes, they would also join our holiday parties, play basketball, and even get their own parent Hebrew school Torah classes and rap Tefillin too! I know what you're thinking. How did they do all this in so little time? Yes, as you can see, they were known for packing in tons in just one year. But guess what? I'm not done! There are so many other awesome things that happened this year that I still didn't get to. Don't say I didn't warn you to grab a pillow and a couch. Well, you see, one time, my friends and I started to complain that it's not fair, that Hebrew school is only once a week. Besides for making a winter and summer camp called Camp Gem, they started making Saturday night events called Havdalah Movie Night. Our parents would drop us off, and then we would party the night away with Havdalah, a Jewish story, a basketball, kosher pizza, laser tag, fun counselors, a movie, moon bounces, face painting, and even a game truck. But there were two more things that added so much to my gem Hebrew school experience. Number one, the reward system called the mitzvah store, where we would earn special mitzvah dollars for doing different good deeds, and then have an awesome prize store once every month. Our bargaining skills definitely came to life, and we learned that mitzvah dollars are worth way more than euros. And number two, the warm, loving, fun, and exciting teachers. They truly cared for each one of us individually. Thanks to them, everything I just told you about happened. Thanks to them, I learned to love and be proud of my Jewish heritage and look forward to pass on these values to my children. This storybook is not over, because learning and growing as a Jew and a good human being is never over. So, if I may end off this story by saying, not the end.